Greetings, goddess. This is your goddess guru, Tyra Omilade, here to share a word of inspiration with you on your path to self-realization and self-mastery. Again, making a video in my car because I'm in mom mode. My children are so busy. And so I'm like, you know what? I may as well just go on ahead and make a video, give a word about whatever I'm feeling like I should give a word about. So recently someone asked me about how did I get off of sugar um, as not just a recovering sugar addict, but one who um, can honestly say that my love affair with sugar created uh, disastrous results in my life. I am a fitness professional and I literally could not believe how I was gaining weight, working out on a regular basis, teaching fitness, teaching dance. Um, <clears throat> and I also couldn't believe the level of exhaustion I was experiencing and um, just feeling depressed and overwhelmed and out of control in my life. And I began to realize I was on the verge of diabetes. Now, I'm one who will self-diagnose in a heartbeat. Um, this is no disrespect. I'm saying this in jest. Unlike my Virgo friends, <laughs> um, I don't like uh, obsess and think that, oh my gosh, do I have this sickness or do I have that sickness? You know, I have some Virgos in my life and they crack me up with all of that but I'm not like that um, literally I can figure out what is going on you know I have spoken about having adrenal fatigue and um, because it all stemmed from this weight gain and I started searching and searching and searching no I would talk to my nurse practitioner my chiropractor I kept saying the level of fatigue that I'm experiencing is ridiculous um, and then finally, I just kept researching and researching and researching like a good Scorpio rising will do. And I finally figured out that I had adrenal fatigue. So and then once I started doing what it takes to move beyond adrenal fatigue, which for me, one of the number one things I needed to do is give up stress. <laughs> but um, it started changing my life day one. Day one, it started changing my life. If anyone wants to hear about my adrenal fatigue journey, just let me know. Um, so on my way from adrenal fatigue, I began to listen to a doctor on YouTube named Dr. Eric Berg. And Dr. Eric Berg is one who talks about insulin resistance, the problem of insulin that the majority of us have going on here who are having health issues. We hear, oh, eating sugar is bad for you. Don't eat sugar, it's bad for you. You know, watch the number of carbs you eat. Um, you don't wanna eat too many carbs, especially if you're trying to lose weight. <gasps> God forbid, do not eat carbs at night. Um, you know, you really need to moderate your sugar intake. Now, you know, if you eat carbs, it's just going to turn into sugar. So you've got to get off those carbs. And those of us who struggle with sugar addiction will say, we know it's not good for us. We've experienced the effects. Maybe we have weight gain. Maybe we have issues with our teeth. Maybe we know the older we get, the harder it is to eat sugar. But it just tastes so good. Oh, I remember. Oh, and don't be an emotional eater. Mm, that's me, honey. I have emotionally eaten all of my life. But you know how it's like, typically, we're pretty good at certain stages. And then at some stages, it's horrible. You know, I remember maybe after my, I had my children, maybe one of them, I was so freaking stressed. I used to eat these suckers. They were uh, like sour apple on the outside, caramel on the inside. 
<laughs> Man, I would tear those things up. That, that was like my magic elixir for getting through the day, having a little baby, feeling stressed out and overwhelmed, somewhat depressed because I was missing my mom and who had passed. And for those of you who don't know that, she had passed three years prior and I was just depressed. And, you know, my way of parenting is natural. And, you know, breastfeed the baby whenever the baby wants to be breastfed. Don't let the baby cry. Just pick that little baby up and hold that baby and love that baby. And, you know, folks will say, don't do that. And you're going to spoil the baby. And if that's your thing, you know, if you, I'm not dogging you. But, you know, when that's not your way and you're wanting to pick up your baby and you're wanting to nurse the baby and sleep with the baby and just do that old country, cr uh, crunchy mama thing. Those of you who think we're spoiling the babies, it makes us feel horrible. And so I felt horrible. I wasn't one of those strong ones. I was just, I was strong in the sense that I wasn't going to stop. <laughs> but emotionally, it was wearing me down. And those suckers, mm, they were right on point. Oh, and then, and I'm doing all this for those of us who, who, who um, are struggling with sugar. This is, this is for those who struggle with sugar because you're going to understand me. You're going to know I understand your pain. Cake. We all have our thing. Cake. For me, I was like, you know what? I'm good as long as there's no cake. As soon as somebody brings some cake up in here, whoo, I'm going to eat that cake, even if it's sort of bad, because, you know, I need I need my cake. I can't say no to cake. I just love cake. Um, now, some of y'all like bread. I've had my little bread phases, you know. Ooh, bread with, um, ooh, with spaghetti. Um, let's see here. Pasta, some of y'all just love that pasta. You do not care anything about sugary sweets. Just give you your pasta, you know. Um, and I used to say as a sugar addict, the pure D sugar, just give me sweet candy, cakes, desserts. I wish I was like the ones that ate pasta. Okay, so there we go. I get it. And then if someone says, please don't do it. It's like, I'm a fitness professional. I know I should not do this, but... I eat emotionally so it's not about whether or not this is good for me it's good for me it's good for my emotions <laughs> it gives you that good fix it just helps you to calm down and relax it's just so good to the palate you know when you're feeling like life isn't going your way you eat that sweet sugary food you you eat that bread you eat that pasta Ooh, grain some of y'all love oatmeal and you like that rice oh my goodness and we try to figure out why do we here in the united states or those of us who are like really from the united states why do we gain weight eating that rice when the asians eating it every day it's like a staple and they are thin so we go through all of this i totally get it so for me i get to the point of exhaustion day in and day out now for those of you who are in your 20s your 30s maybe even 45 below this might be something that you really need to know about because perhaps you're on your way there but it may not be something that you'll totally get because it's like when we're younger our body will just deal with it it, it, it can just handle it but for me, the older I got, the more I ate sugar, the more I began to descend into this abyss called bad health. So I descend into um, adrenal fatigue, which was also related to stress. But I think part of the stress was coming from too much sugar because too much sugar begins to adversely um, affect the brain. And on my way back from adrenal fatigue, I decided to start listening to these um, videos by Dr. Berg, Eric Berg, like I said on YouTube, because for me, um, y'all know I get hot. For me, the results were slow in coming from adrenal fatigue and the amount of money you spend when you're exhausted. It was just becoming too much. I'm trying everything. I'm doing all oh, trying supplements. I bought a um, uh, a rebounder, um, going for appointment after appointment after appointment to with natural paths and, and just, you know, chiropractic, doing everything I can, spending all this money to make this comeback from this extreme exhaustion. 
And so adrenal fatigue truly is a lifestyle, um, I don't want to say disease, I say disorder. And so just like diabetes, it's lifestyle. Some, some people, they might get diabetes, it, it's not lifestyle, you know, like type A, that's different. But I'm talking about, I mean, type, type 1, type 2 diabetes, lifestyle. And so I began to realize I have to change my lifestyle. And one of the main things with adrenal fatigue is you have to watch how much protein you take in and how many carbs you take in. And I began to realize that it, it's all about this hormonal shift. It's all about what are the hormones doing. And so one of the reasons I started researching everything so tough is because I thought to myself, you know what, no one teaches about hormones. Yeah, we say we're hormonal as women, but nobody really teaches us about how do we take care of our hormones. And I began to realize if your hormones are out of whack, you are going to be out of whack. And so I'm thinking to myself, okay, so what is what are the carbs doing to my hormones? So number one, you have to educate yourself on how this sugar is affecting your body. That was really what turned it around for me. Once I began to realize, but but the, the what was what was tied into this was extreme fatigue. So I had this impetus to really make a decision based on the information that I got about how important it was for me to give up carbs. It was either stay exhausted or keep eating your sugar boo. Which one would you like? Wait a minute. Stay exhausted because you keep eating your sugar or give up the sugar and get your freaking life back. Okay. I've eaten so much sugar that, and I, that's why I can speak to it. You know, I have had teeth issues. Some of these teeth cost a lot of money. <laughs> okay. They're more on the side, not in the front. Those are mine. <laughs> anyway. And so I educated myself on literally the chemistry of sugar in the body. Now, I'm going to tell you, adrenal fatigue made me say, eating carbs in the morning, not good, boo. I stopped eating carbs in the morning. And the other thing that I did that was a really big deal was I don't drink caffeine on an empty stomach anymore. That was important too. Immediately, immediately, I felt better. And that's because of hormones. You know, you want the cortisol high in the morning, low in the evening. So eating carbs later in the day is important. And that's another thing I want to really just push. You've got to know you. So I've said a lot. One of the things that is so important, this thing is not just a physical thing. It is a self-awareness thing. It is a self-realization. Self-realization is body, mind, spirit. We've got to know ourselves on all levels. And so as I understand me, then that might mean that even though I'm overweight and everyone is saying, don't eat carbs at night, baby, I might eat me some carbs at night. I might eat me some carbs at night. I'm just keeping it 100 because eating the carbs during the morning, like all of the professionals were saying, if you want to lose weight, this is what you need to do. It wasn't working. It was, it absolutely, I was miserable. So don't listen to everybody. You have to listen and then test it out on yourself. If what you're doing isn't working, guess what? It's not working. I don't care what the professionals say. If it's not working, it's not working and you may need to try something different. And so for me, I've had to have a paradigm shift. I've had to say, you know what? I know what the good fitness people say, but I just can't do it. I, I literally cannot do that thing. I'm sorry, yeah, I get to. I literally cannot, I cannot eat that way. I have to eat in the way that's best for my body or what's going on with my body. Self-realization and self-mastery, body, mind, and spirit, it all matters, friends. Okay, so I began to understand that another issue that is related to um, adrenal fatigue is insulin resistance. And the more I began to hear about the effects of not just uh, carbs and sugar, but protein on the insulin, it made me have to have another paradigm shift. And so I um, 
with that decided, you know what this man is saying? You want to avoid sugar at all cost. And he said, use xylitol. Now, I'm not going to do stevia. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do stevia. I've tried stevia. I don't like it. I don't dislike it, but I'm not going to do that every day. That was another thing. So, you know, you have to educate yourself. Xylitol and erythritol, I think is the other one. They are pretty good, pretty safe, and they're better than sucralose and all those other um, artificial sweeteners or sugar alcohols because they actually, in fact, could potentially produce insulin. Um, so I became convinced that the only way I was going to get past not just the weight issue but the adrenal fatigue was I had to give up sugar. Okay. That was after a long journey though because the other piece to this thing is know thyself. I have an inclination based on my incarnation. Oh, do I have an incarnation? Well, maybe it's not my incarnation. Oh, do it was a major oh, do that I've have done for me. Oh, okay. So if you don't know what oh, do is uh, or are in um, the Ifa tradition, when you go to a diviner and get a reading, uh, or if you're doing your own um, readings with um, the Obi. The wisdom that speaks, the wisdom text in Ifa is called Odu. And so the Odu, it's like the energy that spoke. This this energy actually is too. It's I I have issues with emotions. Body, mind, spirit. I'm not I cannot just approach my issues with sugar um, from okay, I just gotta eat a certain way. I have to be highly self-aware. And so it has taken year after year after year of me coming to terms, you know, getting readings, taking the readings, pondering, figuring out what to do, looking at myself, experiencing the emotion, doing something with this emotion. It has taken year after year after year for me to become highly self-aware that I could even be successful with giving up sugar. Because like I said in the beginning, there's so many of us who we know we need to give it up. We tried it. We do fast and all that kind of good stuff. And then we come right back to our boo, sugar. Um, so it takes understanding that perhaps you are somebody who is, you have an emotional nature. And until you get in terms, come to terms with the fact that you are potentially a very emotional person. So for instance, I'm just using astrology. Someone born with a lot of Cancerian energy, a lot of Pisces energy, and even a lot of Scorpio energy. Those are water signs. The water has to do with emotions and feelings. Oh, and we will feel everything. You know, those of us have this watery nature. We will feel it all. Not just my emotion. I'm feeling your emotion if I'm hanging out with you long enough. But then I have to become self-aware. You know, one of the things I teach people who um, get readings from me, when they, have, when they are highly psychic, I have to tell them, look, just because you're psychic doesn't mean that you have, like, you have to become aware of your psychic abilities. And just because you hear and sense and know things about people doesn't mean you have to keep it. You have to know your energy and yourself so well that when you pick up something from someone else, you're, you are aware. Oh, wait a minute. I picked up something from, you know, my coworker. I'm picking up my child's or my partner's energy. And so, you know, I'm going to send it back their way. You know, if it's something I need to do, I will. But sometimes we just pick stuff up, you know. Sometimes we just sort of take it in and um, it's nothing to do about it. You just hear it. You can't help it. It's like our, our hearing. When we're out in public, we hear people talking. You can't not hear it. You don't have to zone in on it, but you can't not hear people. So, you know, if you're that way, you have to be highly self-aware. And when you're aware, then, you know, when you pick someone else's stuff up, you give it right back. You, you have these, these delineations, these boundaries around yourself. And for people who have an emotional nature, you have to have practices in place that will help you to 
um, daily. <laughs> Manage your emotions so that if you're feeling stressed out about something, you have to put other things in place to help you not go and eat that food, not go and eat that sugar. Um, and, and over time, when you make that physical disconnect from sugar, you almost get to a point where you don't even really want the sugar anymore. It's not good. It tastes horrible. It's overwhelming when you eat it. When we're eating it, it's, it's a drug. So the more we eat, the more we can handle eating. <laughs> so um, that, that is something that begins to happen over time. And so for me, I had to convince myself of the physical devastation that I was doing to my body, um, which was proven to me through um, uh, adrenal fatigue, which was also stress too, and um, the inability to lose weight. As a matter of fact, it wasn't just an inability to lose weight. The last time I picked up my last 10 pounds, I it was uh, maybe my birthday, and I ate cake. <laughs> Ooh. And you know, for me, for women who are 40 plus, even 45, to me, like up to about 44, 45, you're still sort of like you're 30. You, it starts changing a little bit. And I'm just putting this out here for you because folks don't really talk about this, okay? But the older we get, for sure 40 plus, we have less estrogen. And the less estrogen you have, the more your body, body excuse me, doesn't do a good job of metabolizing carbs. It's easier to gain that weight. And, and so combine that with me having my whole system being off anyway, weight just jumps on me. <laughs> But that was my that was my rock bottom when I saw I had gained another ten pounds. And I'm I'm being open and transparent with you all because we need more of that in this culture. Um and because I don't want anyone else to, to descend. If you can learn from my lesson, why not? So, you know, I'm working to try to get thirty pounds off. Um and this is with I mean, for maybe a good three months almost three months, um, is when I gave up the sugar. I have since then had to significantly decrease my carbs in terms of like, um, like I don't eat anything made out of flour. <clears throat> Let me not say I don't eat anything. Every now and again, I might eat a little bit, but it typically, I'm going to eat the whole grain. I'm going to eat the oatmeal. I'm going to eat the brown rice. I don't want any um, bread made gluten-free bread. I don't care about gluten-free bread anymore. <laughs> it's, it used to make me feel high, you know, Oh, it was just, whoo, that was a sugar rush for sure. Um, but anywho, um, it has take, it's taking me a while, but that's my journey. Again, I'm self-aware when I lose weight, I don't lose weight fast. Even when I was in my twenties, if I was going to lose weight, it was going to take me a little bit longer than everyone else. But when it came off, it was going to stay off. As long as I did what I was supposed to do. Um, okay, so. Um, <clears throat> being self-aware is very important. Understanding. And then having that knowledge that, that where you know for a fact you're, you're, if you're going to eat sugar, at least do it in an educated manner. And understand what is happening in the body and so for me having that insulin rise up it was pushing the fat into my my cells and i'm literally looking at my body i mean like i'm like wow this is like fat it's like i can just see the fat puffing up but the other thing is you know it it's my liver i had to understand the the, the um, importance of my liver and so the more toxins we take into our body the less the liver is going to work when the liver when the body gets toxic the body is so wise, it will push that fat into our cells. And, and so, oh, excuse me, it'll push the toxins into our cells. And of course, the fat surrounds it to keep us from, from dying. That is the wisdom of our body. So we should work with the wisdom of our body. It takes education. It takes desire. It takes um, knowing yourself. So another thing is like looking at yourself 
mind, body, and spirit through f however you want to. But I'm just going to say astrology. Divination might do it also, like with ephi. Some people are master ephi diviners. Um, whatever that thing is that can give you a big picture of yourself. And you already know to a certain degree. But also looking at the fact that, for instance, I have a Taurus moon. Tauruses are notorious for indulgence and, you know, just just feeling good and having a good time and sensual desire sensual desires and food you know you may be born under a sign where people really like food and so how do we use astrology not just to know about our personality but to know um to, to be able to use that knowledge to make decisions about how we're going to operate so if you know you have an inherent weakness because this is the energy under which you were born then you have to do something to help keep that thing in check and balance you know so self-realization self-mastery how did i do it self-realization and self-mastery and it is a day by day process Every day I have to do self-realization because guess what? Um, Y'all know I'm in astrology right now. The planets, the moon. Let's just talk about the moon. The moon shifts day in and day out. Okay, every two days or so. <laughs> it is constantly shifting, but it's not even in the same place because it's degrees. It's degrees. 360 degrees. It is moving through all the, the degrees of the zodiac. So it might be at one degree, you know, at one point of this day and in another degree in another time of the day. The, emo the moon is about our emotions. So every day the moon goes to the zodiac. If I am aware of that, because that moon is within me, it's not just the moon that's in the sky. It's the inner moon. That moon is tick tocking every day going through signs. If I'm aware of that and I know, say, perhaps the moon is in Taurus. I'm just going to use Taurus because I know Taurus well. Is in Taurus. Um, let's say Pisces or Scorpio or Cancer. The moon is in one of those water signs. I might be feeling emotional. If I know that and then I know I'm prone to emotions. I'm, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm prone to emotions. Then I am going to put something in place that day that I know will keep my emotions in check. I have started using... um. Bach flower remedies I have known about these things for decades never used them if you know about Bach let me see there we go I don't know how it's going to look on the screen it looks backwards to me here but Bach B-A-C-H flower remedies you just take the little thing spread it in your mouth baby <laughs> settles me right on down I guess it's like a no it's a flower essence I think sort of like a homeopathic but we have to do these kinds of things. If it's yoga, if it's deep yogic breathing, you know, some of y'all are air signs. So using deep yogic breathing, you have to know yourself to know what can I do to shift myself away from this. And so, you know, do you want to hit rock bottom? Um, are you already at rock bottom with your sugar addiction? How further does your health need to go down for you to make the decision to change is life so bad and so unmanageable that you can't um find another way to cope i mean at the end of the day we all got to cope so let's just find a different way to cope but i think for me i had to hit rock bottom it, it completely descend into a pit of fatigue that was depressing me um, weight gain that was alarming me and embarrassing me um, I had to hit rock bottom and I hope that you don't have to do that if you just keep day in and day out persistence wins working to make positive changes in your life I, and the reason I pause is because I'm trying to think of how the, the other way you don't really want to say it like you know, we'd say we want to get over the sugar addiction, but then we have to also add in that I, I want to manage my life in a more positive manner. You know, that just ties us right back into the energy that has been speaking this year through Shango. Haru, how are you managing your life? 
if I have to manage my life through eating, through sugar addiction, I'm not being a good manager of my life. I have to admit that. You know, it's just, it's 12 steps, baby. It's the 12 steps. You got to admit the problem. And you've got to admit that it really is a problem that is outweighing the reason that we're taking it. I'm, I'm, I'm eating all these, this sugar, even eating some of the carbs. Cause once I get off the sugar, I trick myself. I lie. Oh, I'm not eating sugary sweets. I'm just going to make some rice. <laughs> all of us sugar addicts know that's a trick. It's, it's a trick. Um, and so, you know, you have to admit I, I'm an addict and it's my fault. I, this is completely and totally in my hands. Sugar ain't making me eat it. Nothing that nobody is making me eat this sugar. I just need to understand myself. I need to accept that I can make other choices in my life um, and that um, I will do it. Or else I accept that I'm digging myself into this super bad, horrible hole, whatever your hole might be. Um, but it's a choice. Again, that's another lesson of Shango. Everything is a choice. You have to choose to get off of it. And I know the story. Dang, it's so hard. I've tried and I can't do it. Well, I've done it now. <laughs> but it, it was at a very high cost. And um, the other thing that I tell you that concerned me so much was my memory was horrible. I am a Pisces son. I actually have a couple of planets in Pisces. And um, I know that I don't all the time remember things. Like if it's important, I'm going to remember that thing. I can remember so much. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I'm not known for the best memory, but it, it wasn't horrible. It, my memory had gotten so bad. I would mess up teaching. I couldn't remember anything. Everyone's thinking I'm a freaking dingbat. And I started getting pissed off about that because I'm like, I'm not a, I'm not a dingbat. I'm smart. I do not understand why my brain is just literally checking out. <sighs> Insulin resistance, too much sugar, you know, too much insulin in the body. Every time you eat, insulin rises out. It comes up. And so you want to decrease the amount of insulin that you're exposed to. And that's one of the reasons you want to not eat sugar. Because of, of course, if you eat sugar, it's going to get released. Protein also. And so I began to realize through my research, people, all this Alzheimer's that people are experiencing, some of it, another doctor I listened to calls it diabetes. Diabetes is Alzheimer's. And Alzheimer's is related to too much insulin from too much sugar and too much protein. Protein will raise that insulin also. I don't promote any particular diet, but you know, I'm noticing a lot of people talking about ketosis. I'm sorry, I just I want to eat whole foods. I want to eat a little bit of food. I need I want to eat enough to survive. <laughs> you know, and to thrive. Um I don't do well, I think to myself, probably if I get desperate enough, maybe I will turn to ketosis. But, you know, this anti-fat sentiment that we have in this culture is a bunch of BS, okay? Too much fat is bad, but not enough fat. Baby, you're going to be hungry. So I'll put that out there for people who want to know about it, ketosis. What I'm working with right now is intermittent fasting. This is the last thing I'm going to say before I close out this video. There is a man who goes to my son's Taekwondo studio. I saw him the other day. I had not seen him in a good long while. Now he had told me that he's had surgeries and different things like that on his knees because he has uh, lots of knee pain. He was even going to a pain clinic. I was like, ooh, I didn't know it was that serious. He said he finally realized none of these surgeries worked. None, nothing's gonna work. I just gotta lose this weight. He's a real tall guy and he was sort of biggish but I wouldn't look at him as like fat maybe maybe he had gained some weight but you know it was like whatever with his weight so I see him and I'm looking at him like what did he do he looks 10 years younger he's so thin you know look good 
And as he was standing there talking, I thought, if he says intermittent fasting, I'm going to know I'm on the right, right road. What did he say? Intermittent fasting. He says he stops eating at 5 o'clock at night, and he doesn't eat again until he wakes up in the morning. So it's about 12 hours. And I've been doing intermittent fasting now for, I'm going to say seriously, for about two or three weeks. But I hadn't been going 12 hours. I would try to go, like my um, Dr. Berg would say, three meals a day, no snacks. Um, and that's see again paradigm shift everyone in this culture you want to lose weight you gotta you gotta keep that blood sugar level don't let don't get hungry and let it spike and um you know you eat, you need to eat five meals a day try it and if it doesn't work maybe you need to just eat three square meals i'm just saying i'm i tra- i am testing whatever people tell me i should do if it doesn't work i don't care so I started going for the three square meals, trying to eat a meal and go three or four hours without eating. And so now I'm working on cutting my food off at seven. And I always used to do this. When I, this is part of the reason I lost weight. You, but I didn't know why. Again, research, learn how your body works. I would stop eating at seven at night and I would lose weight in my 20s. Like just like that. I couldn't do it in my 30s. Too much stress with kids. I just could not cut that thing off. Anyway, I didn't want to. Um, so he tells me intermittent fasting is all he is doing. He's not even like being super strict. I'm, I'm assuming he's not eating horribly, but he was like, I'm not super strict on how I eat. He's not eating. He's not doing ketosis or anything like that. Just 12 hours, 53 pounds. This man has lost. And I started researching in my Scorpio rising way, <laughs> intermittent fasting. And I'm finding out. This is a good thing. It's a good thing to not eat, to give your body a break from food. So I hope that this helps those of you who are wondering how I've done it. What am I doing? Not to say I have really lost any weight yet. I have not. I'm still working on it. I'm going to keep y'all posted though, because I really do think I'm on to something. I actually like intermittent fasting better than counting calories and Uh, all that kind of good stuff as long as I know I'm not eating sugary sweets and different things like that um I just at this point it's too much structure it overwhelms me and then it just all goes to hell in a handbasket I hope that this video helps you on your path to self-realization and self-mastery because for some of us sugar addiction is a part of our path to self-realization and self-mastery I know it has been for me um Please like, share the video, let me know what you think, give me your questions, Um, and if I can divine for you on your behalf, let me know. I would love to divine on your behalf, and I wish you a great rest of the day. Peace.